This archaeological evidence proves the Bible. Take a fascinating tour through the ages as we unearth striking evidence from archaeology that supports the historical accuracy of biblical accounts. From important relics to enormous finds, this exploration focuses on the material remains that support biblical events and characters. Join us as we solve historical puzzles and uncover the deep connections between biblical stories and archaeology. Get ready to be astounded by the interesting new perspectives these discoveries provide on the complex history of humanity as it is presented in the Bible. The Significance of Archaeology The historical integrity of biblical narratives is greatly supported by archaeological discoveries, which provide concrete windows into the past and give ancient stories life. Unlike simple legends or myths, the Bible is based on actual events and places, and archaeological discoveries are crucial in confirming its accuracy. Imagine being surrounded by artifacts that tell stories of a bygone period while standing amid the ruin of an old city. Every pottery shard, every tablet inscription, and the design of ancient buildings add to our understanding of the world that biblical characters lived in. These finds are vibrant testimonies to the persons and events described in the Bible, not just old dusty artifacts from the past. The excavations have also shed light on the historical and cultural background of biblical stories. The archaeological discoveries of ancient towns such as Megiddo, Jerusalem and Jericho have illuminated the urban settings in which biblical events occurred. Biblical stories can be understood and contextualized against a rich backdrop provided by the layers of ancient civilizations that archaeologists have uncovered. In short, archaeological findings are vital pillars in maintaining the historical authenticity of the Bible and not just scholarly endeavors. They provide concrete evidence of the truth behind biblical narratives bridging the gap between ancient writings and contemporary understanding. We can learn about past civilizations and the importance of the Bible in human history by exploring historical sites. Hugo Winkler and his contributions Hugo Winkler was a pioneering archaeologist whose groundbreaking finds and intellectual contributions had a lasting impact on the study of ancient civilizations. Winkler, who was born in Germany in 1863, was captivated by the wonders of the past at a young age and became passionate about archaeology. Throughout his distinguished career, Winkler made multiple trips to the Near East, where he painstakingly explored historic locations and discovered a wealth of artifacts that provided previously undiscovered insights into prehistoric cultures. His archaeological investigations reached areas including Mesopotamia, Anatolia, and the Levant, where he found artifacts that were thousands of years old. One of Winkler's greatest achievements was his excavation at Hattusha, the ancient Hittite capital that is now in Turkey. Winkler discovered a significant discovery here in 1906 an archive of clay tablets bearing inscriptions in cuneiform script. The priceless historical records, official documents and diplomatic letters found in these tablets, known as the Hittite archives, provided an abundance of knowledge about the prehistoric Hittite civilization. Winkler's painstaking recording and dissection of the Hittite tablets transformed our knowledge of this historical society by revealing its social, political, and religious customs. In addition to adding to our understanding of the Hittites, his study established the groundwork for future investigations into the ancient Near East. For a long time, the Hittite nation was not well known in world history. However, they played a significant role in the Old Testament and have helped to confirm the accuracy of the Bible. In the past, Archaeologists and historians had no knowledge of the Hittites. Critics of the Bible used this lack of evidence to argue that the Hittites were merely a part of the mythology in the Bible. 
They believe that since there was no archaeological evidence of a Hittite civilization, it must never have existed, and therefore the Bible must be wrong. However, since 1876, many archaeological discoveries have been made that show the Hittites were powerful people during the 15th and 16th centuries BC. These discoveries have helped to prove that the Hittite civilization was real and that the Bible is indeed accurate. Winkler made contributions to archaeology in several fields of study, in addition to his excavations at Hattusha. He studied Mesopotamian ancient civilizations in great detail, with an emphasis on the Sumerians and Akkadians. Winkler's interdisciplinary approach and painstaking studies were vital in helping to unravel the rich historical tapestry of these ancient cultures and understand their details. Winkler shared his love of archaeology with a larger audience through his extensive writing and lecturing, in addition to his research and academic pursuits. A new generation of archaeologists was inspired to investigate the mysteries of the past by his captivating narratives and keen evaluations which captured the interest of both academics and ordinary people. The Discovery of the Hittite Tablets The Hittite Tablets, discovered by archaeologist Hugo Winkler in 1906, amid the wild terrain of central Anatolia in modern-day Turkey, would permanently change our understanding of ancient history. These cuneiform written clay tablets were discovered at the site of the ancient Hittite capital Atusha. They offer an interesting glimpse into the governmental, social, and cultural workings of one of the most influential ancient Near Eastern civilizations. Thousands of Hittite tablets were discovered in the royal archives of Atusha, which were kept amid the remains of the enormous palace structure that had stood there. These archives, which held a variety of official documents, court rulings, Diplomatic letters and sacred writings covering several centuries of Hittite history functioned as the bureaucratic center of the Hittite Empire. The fact that the Hittite tablets are multilingual is one of their most important features. The tablets are written in both Hittite and Akkadian, the common language of the ancient Near East. The cosmopolitan character of the Hittite Empire which included a wide range of linguistic and ethnic groupings within its enormous borders, is reflected in this linguistic diversity. The Hittite tablet's contents offer priceless insights into a variety of facets of Hittite society and government. They provide an account of the complex network of diplomatic ties that existed between the Hittite Empire and its surrounding countries, including Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. They also provided insight into the Hittite legal system by providing thorough documentation of contracts, land transactions, and legal conflicts. The Hittite tablets are important from an administrative and diplomatic standpoint, but they also provide insights into the religious activities and beliefs of the Hittite people. They offer a glimpse into the religious life of this ancient society and include hymns, prayers and ceremonies devoted to the Hittite system of gods and goddesses. Hugo Winkler's discovery of the Hittite tablets and the following excavations at Atusha have had a significant influence on our understanding of ancient Near Eastern history. These tablets have added to our knowledge of the Hittite Empire and advanced scholarly debates over the relationships between the Near East's ancient civilizations. Insights from Hittite Tablets Some of the many Hittite tablets found at Atusha are particularly powerful evidence of the complexities of ancient history. As one of the first documented peace treaties, the Treaty of Kadesh, a diplomatic marvel from circa 1258 BC, is exceptional. This agreement, the result of discussions between Egypt and the Hittite Empire, represents a turning point in history by ending long conflicts and demonstrating the skill of ancient diplomacy. The Anate text, another interesting tablet, provides an engaging story of King Anata of Kusara, revealing the early history of the Hittite kingdom. 
This tale of history offers insight into the political and cultural climate of the era, in addition to highlighting King Adita's military exploits. These tablets are windows into the rich tapestry of the Hittite civilization, not just historical documents. The Hittite Empire's skill in diplomacy is demonstrated by the Treaty of Kadesh, which highlights the complexity of international relations. In the meantime, the Anata text provides insights into the early roots of Hittite governance, while revealing the cultural and political dynamics of an era. The Hittites are mentioned more than 50 times in the Bible. They were descended from Heth, the son of Canaan and great-grandson of Noah. Genesis chapter 10, verse 15. Canaan became the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. They ruled the area of Syria and eastern Turkey and battled with Egypt and Babylon for territory. Babylonian and Assyrian records refer to Syria and Israel as Hatilan, and Joshua chapter 1 verse 4 includes their territory as a great part of the promised land for Israel. Joshua chapter 1 verse 4. From the wilderness of Arabia in the south and this Lebanon in the north, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates in the east, all the land of the Hittites, Canaan, and as far as the great Mediterranean Sea toward the west shall be your territory. Abraham was well acquainted with the Hittites, and he bought the burial cave for Sarah from them in Genesis chapter 23. Sarah lived 127 years. This was the length of the life of Sarah. Sarah died in Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan and Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham stood up before his dead wife's body and spoke to the sons of Heth, Hittite, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner, resident alien among you. Give, sell me property for a burial place among you, so that I may bury my dead in the proper manner. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Listen to us, my Lord. You are Prince of God, a mighty Prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our graves. None of us will refuse you his grave or hinder you from burying your dead wife. So Abraham stood up and bowed to the people of the land of the Hittites. And Abraham said to them, If you are willing to grant my dead a proper burial, listen to me and plead with Ephron the son of Zohar for me, so that he may give, sell me the cave of Machpelah which he owns. It is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me here in your presence for the full price as a burial site, which I may keep forever among you. Now Ephron was present there among the sons of Heth, so within the hearing of all the sons of Heth, and all who were entering the gate of his city. Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham, saying, No, my lord, hear me. I give you the entire field, and I also give you the cave that is in it. In the presence of the men of my people, I give, sell it to you, bury your dead there. Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land, he said to Ephron in the presence of the people of the land, If you will only please listen to me and accept my offer, I will give you the price of the field. Accept it from me, and I will bury my dead there. Ephron replied to Abraham, My lord, listen to me. The land you seek is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? So bury your dead. So Abraham listened to Ephron and agreed to his terms, and he weighed out for Ephron the amount of silver which he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, four hundred shekels of silver, according to the weights current among the merchants. Esau took wives from among the Hittites, 
Genesis chapter 26, verse 34. When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, the daughter of Beri the Hittite, and Basimath, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, as his wives. And Uriah the Hittite was one of David's mighty men. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 3. David sent word and inquired about the woman. Someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? The Hittites are mentioned throughout the kingdom years, and even after the Jews return from captivity. Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. It is believed that the Hittites eventually assimilated into the surrounding cultures and lost their unique identity. The Hittites followed a pluralistic religion that involved the worship of nature. They believed in a variety of gods, including gods associated with the earth, sky, and weather. These gods were often mentioned as witnesses in treaties and oaths. Like many other pagan societies, the Hittites' nature worship led to abhorrent practices which angered the true God. When God gave Canaan to the Israelites, one of the reasons for wiping out the inhabitants was to eradicate the pagan rituals that could lure God's people into sin. Exodus chapter 23, verses 28 through 33. I will send hornets ahead of you, which will drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite before you. I will not drive them out before you in a single year, so that the land does not become desolate due to lack of attention, and the wild animals of the field do not become too numerous for you. I will drive them out before you little by little, until you have increased and are strong enough to take possession of the land. I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines, the Mediterranean, and from the wilderness to the river Euphrates. For I will hand over the residents of the land to you, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall not make a covenant with them or with their gods. They shall not live in your land, because they will make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it is certain to be a trap for you, resulting in judgment. God didn't want his people following the idolatry of the Hittites. The descriptions of land transactions and personal covenants that are recorded in Genesis show a strong resemblance to the Hittite records that have been discovered by archaeologists. King Telepinus is considered to be the greatest Hittite legislator, and it is found that his law codes are arranged and ordered in a way that is very similar to the Law of Moses even though the subject matter is different. The Bible's details have been greatly supported by the discoveries that have been made regarding the Hittite kingdom. Exploring Biblical Parallels in the Hittite Tablets The discovery of the Hittite tablets at Atusha offers a fascinating point of convergence for Biblical stories and ancient Near Eastern history. These clay tablets provide fascinating connections with biblical themes and personalities. They mainly record diplomatic correspondences, legal decrees, and religious ceremonies of the Hittite Empire. Comparable to biblical narratives of diplomatic discussions between ancient Israel and neighboring countries, the tablets disclose treaties and alliances between the Hittite Empire and adjacent kingdoms. It is noteworthy that the Treaty of Kadesh has elements similar to peace treaties found in the Hebrew Bible. In terms of religion, the tablets shed light on the Hittite people's polytheistic beliefs and rites, which are similar to biblical accounts of ancient Near Eastern religious traditions. The varied system of Hittite gods and goddesses bears resemblance to the divine entities recorded in biblical writings. Legally speaking, the tablets record land transactions, court cases, and contractual agreements, providing insight into the legal system of prehistoric Hittite culture. These court cases are consistent with biblical stories that portray legal customs among the ancient Israelites and their neighbors. On top of that, 
The tablets provide dynastic lineages and tracks of royal achievements that resemble biblical stories about the deeds of kings and rulers like King David and King Solomon. The tablets enhance our comprehension of biblical stories by providing deeper insights into the cultural and historical milieu of the ancient Near East, in addition to drawing specific parallels. They offer a striking background against which biblical events can be interpreted and understood, revealing the connections between the region's ancient civilizations. The Impact Hugo Winkler's discovery of the Hittite tablets at Atusha changed the perception of other archaeologists and attracted a lot of attention globally. In addition to offering insightful information on the history and culture of the Hittite Empire, these ancient artifacts spurred broader debates concerning the accuracy of biblical narratives and the interdependence of the Near East ancient civilizations. The finding of the Hittite tablets gave archaeologists strong evidence that the Bible is historically accurate. Scholars were forced to reconsider their conception of ancient history because of the striking similarities found between the contents of the tablets and biblical accounts. These connections provided concrete evidence of the sequence and cultural setting in which biblical events took place. These tablets' importance in the field of biblical studies was further cemented by Winkler and later archaeologists' thorough documentation and investigation of them. Outside of the academic community, the public's curiosity in archaeology and ancient history was sparked by the finding of the Hittite tablets. The discovery quickly gained international attention and generated curiosity in the Near East's ancient civilizations among observers. Both believers and skeptics found common ground when it was revealed that concrete proof of biblical events and personalities had been excavated at Hattusha. This led to conversations regarding the relationship between historical research and faith. Further Discoveries Numerous archaeological discoveries have served as pillars of support for the Bible's historical authenticity throughout history, providing information on places, times, and people that are described in the books. These discoveries support the truthfulness of biblical accounts and deepen our understanding of ancient civilizations. They also provide concrete proof of the Bible's historical credibility. One of the most amazing proofs of King David's existence in biblical history is the Tel Dan Stila. This ancient stone inscription, which dates to the 9th century BCE and was found in northern Israel in the early 1990s, refers to the House of David, offering extra-biblical proof of David's dynasty and rule. Likewise, our understanding of biblical writings has been completely transformed by the mid-20th century discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, close to the Dead Sea shoreline. Nearly every book of the Hebrew Bible is found in fragmentary form in these ancient Jewish manuscripts, which span the period from the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE. Biblical scriptures were accurately and authentically transferred throughout millennia, as attested by the Dead Sea Scrolls, which provide priceless insights into this process. The Cyrus Cylinder, discovered in what is now Iraq in 1879, adds more support to biblical narratives. This ancient clay cylinder, which dates to the 6th century BC, has a proclamation from King Cyrus of Persia on it. This proclamation is consistent with biblical accounts of Cyrus's decree, enabling the Jews to rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. The 2004 discovery of the Pool of Siloam in Jerusalem confirmed the New Testament's description of biblical events. The location where Jesus miraculously healed a blind man was verified by this first century ritual bath, which is mentioned in the Gospel of John. This tangible evidence supports the historical truth of biblical events. Layers of prehistoric artifacts and structures that date back thousands of years 
have been unearthed during excavations at the City of David, which is located just beyond the walls of Jerusalem's Old City. Biblical narratives have been verified by these continuous excavations, which validate elements recorded in Biblical chronicles of Jerusalem's history and give archaeological proof for the historical presence of ancient Israelites. Furthermore, the Kirbet Kayafa excavations have found remnants dating to the 10th century BCE, proving the existence of walled urban centers in ancient Israel during the reign of King David and King Solomon, as mentioned in the Bible. These findings support the biblical text's authority as trustworthy historical records by offering concrete proof of the historical events they describe. The Rosetta Stone is a noteworthy archaeological find that further strengthens the Bible's historical accuracy. The Rosetta Stone, found in Egypt in 1799, is a royal decree dated to 196 BCE from King Ptolemy V. Its three script inscriptions, Greek, Demotic, and Hieroglyphic, made it easier to decode the hieroglyphs of the ancient Egyptians. The Bible includes a highlight to the Rosetta Stone, which gave researchers a key to solving the riddles of ancient Egyptian society, even though it has nothing to do with biblical events. This finding strengthened our understanding of the historical setting of biblical stories about interactions between ancient Israelites and surrounding cultures, providing more evidence that the Bible is historically accurate. Therefore, the numerous archaeological finds, such as the Cyrus Cylinder, Tel Dan Stila, Dead Sea Scrolls, Pool of Siloam, City of David excavations, and Kirbet Kayafa excavations have offered more evidence for the historical authenticity of the Bible. These discoveries provide verifiable proof that corresponds with biblical stories, confirming the Bible's credibility as a historical record that safeguards the rich fabric of history. In a nutshell, there is strong evidence for the historical veracity of the Bible provided by the alignment of archaeological findings with biblical stories. These discoveries, which include the Cyrus Cylinder, the Pool of Siloam, the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the Tel Dan Stila, provide verifiable proof that corresponds with biblical characters, events, and places. Our grasp of ancient history is enhanced by the further confirmation of facts found in the Bible, provided by excavations at the sites of the city of David and Kirbet Kayafa. In addition to demonstrating the Bible's historical accuracy, these findings shed light on the connections between the Near Eastern ancient civilizations. Our appreciation of the historical truths contained in the biblical texts continues to grow as a result of these discoveries made during archaeological study. However, this is not the only archaeology evidence that proves the Bible. To watch the other, click here.